Hey everyone, welcome to another week of KNR 440. This week we're going to be moving on to the second stage of the sales process. Um, so last week we highlighted that first stage, which was the needs analysis stage. Um, so really just focusing on information gathering, right, from the prospect. So gathering as much information as possible about their potential needs, desires, etc. Um, and so once that stage of analysis is complete, you can then move on to the presenting solution uh, stage of the sales process. Again, this is a, a four-stage process we're going to be looking at here over the coming weeks. Um, and this stage uh, regarding presenting solutions is really all about satisfying needs. So it's about using the information that you discovered or gathered in that needs assessment phase and by being able to present solutions to a prospect, uh, the salesperson is able to then articulate how a customer's needs will be met as a result of purchasing a product from the team. Um, of course, in the context of this class, the product is tickets to a sporting event. So um, presenting solutions is all about using that information gathered from the needs analysis stage to present a potential solution uh, in the context of uh, a ticket package. Okay, so one way I think about the presenting solution stage is to think about a bridge. Okay, so we're going to use a metaphor here, and the bridge is going to be our metaphor. Um, so the presenting solutions phase is the bridge that connects that information gathering to the actual sales pitch. Okay, um, so think of the information gathering um, phase that we already talked about over here. Um, before you actually get on the bridge. And then the bridge itself is this um, connection point, right? It's the way for us to connect the information gathered in that needs analysis phase um, to the actual sales pitch that we're putting together. So it really is this bridge um, connecting those two important pieces. Um, keep in mind, this is also the first time during the sales process that you're actually going to be talking about product offerings, right? So far, it's all been about building rapport, learning as much information as possible, and really just listening um, to the prospect discuss uh, what their interests and needs are. Okay, so as we think about this concept of presenting solutions, um, it's important to recognize that Again, every potential prospect is going to have their own individual, unique needs or problems, right? Um, but keep in mind that in terms of solutions uh, available to a uh, sales representative, um, generally they're going to have a variety of ticket packages that can fit those different needs, right? So that's why uh, you often see for a sport organization selling tickets that they ha offer a variety of packages, right? And we talked about the different types of inventory a few weeks ago. Um, but this kind of brings that back up and really the need for that, right? Because we're trying to fill a variety of needs for, for a variety of different prospects. So having that menu of options available gives that sales rep the ability to identify potential solutions based on the individual prospect's needs. Right. Um, so, for instance, if the need identified is that the person wants to entertain clients with their tickets, uh, a good solution might be to offer club seats, right, where they get um, close seats to the action, uh, in-seat weight service. Um, those types of seats might be, uh, and particularly, uh, a good solution for um, someone looking to entertain uh, clients and kind of wow them. Uh, as opposed to, let's say, um, someone uh, who uh, is looking for just something to do with their family of four, you know, um, they're probably not going to be able to attend every game, right? Because they're busy, they got a busy schedule, kids playing sports and doing all kinds of activities. So maybe a flex plan is better for them, right? One where they can choose individual games to go to. Um, so I won't go through each of these needs, but keep in mind that this process of presenting solutions is often trying to match a potential need with a potential solution. Um, and that's really the process that's occurring here during the presenting solution stage. So you might be asking yourself, Liz, how does one craft a solution statement? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Um, now, thankfully, uh, as we do in a lot of areas in sales, uh, we have a great tested process that we can utilize to develop a solution statement. Um, so, you know, we saw this uh, or a version of this or an example of this last week in the needs analysis phase, but uh, oftentimes 
um, business scholars have tested and tried a lot of these different processes. And, and one of those that we're going to be utilizing here in the um, uh, presenting solutions phase is the SPET process. Um, so the SPET process, as you can see here, uh, stands for summarize, present, explain, and trial close. Okay, so this is basically just a four-step process for putting together a solution statement. All right, so once you've gone through that needs analysis phase of the sales process, you should be able to craft a solution statement using the SPET process. Um, and I'm going to show you each step individually here in a minute, uh, and I'll show you an example where we actually go through each stage and put together a solution statement together. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but this is a great, uh, again, tested process that we can use, again, to bridge that gap between the needs analysis and the sales itself. Um, and it gives us a model to follow, right, in order to put together the solution statement. Okay, so let's go over each of these uh, steps individually here. And again, we're going to use an example uh, to craft our own solution statement. Um, so first step in the SPET uh, process is summarize. Okay, so what are we talking about when we talk about summarizing? Well, here we're talking about summarizing the need, motive, or problem that was identified during that needs analysis phase. Okay, so the sales rep has to go back to what they've already learned from the prospect during that needs analysis phase and essentially just summarize back to the prospect what they've learned, right? So this is fairly simple if you've done a thorough needs assessment process. So let's use an example here. Um, we'll say that our, our example prospect is uh, a young man, uh, is in his mid-20s, uh, newly married. Um, they don't have any kids, um, but they're both working hard and looking to um, you know, do something uh, that brings them together on the weekends, right? They need a, a way to connect. So that's our prospect um, that we're dealing with here. So uh, the sales rep in this case might come up with a summary like this, right? Based on what you've told me, you and your wife are looking for a fun way to spend date night on the weekends, okay? So you can see here they've utilized this uh, SPET phrasing process by using one of these recommended starters, right? So uh, in order to summarize, you kind of have to start with uh, an initiation of what the prospect has already told you, right? So you could say something like, based on what you've told me, or, well, it sounds like is... Um, and in this case, I've used that first one. So based on what you've told me, you and your wife are looking for a fun way to spend date night on the weekends. Again, this is just information that the prospect gave the sales rep at some point uh, in that needs analysis phase. So that's step one, uh, summarize. Step two uh, is present. So present, uh, in this case, is actually presenting a solution, right? So based on what has been um, gathered in that needs analysis process, the sales rep is now going to present a potential solution, right? So think back to that slide we looked at a few minutes ago in regard to matching problems with solutions. That's basically what's going to happen in the second step uh, of the SPET process. So some uh, example phrasing you could use here is I would recommend or you should consider, right? Something that's going to prompt uh, an actual solution or, or preempt a, a solution. So here's, we've already got the first part of our uh, solution statement here, right? Based on what you've told me, you and your wife are looking for a fun way to spend date night on the weekends. If we add a present uh, phrase, we would say you should consider our weekend plan. Right? So here the sales rep has presented a potential solution based on the information they gathered in that needs analysis process. Because uh, the rep knows that the prospect uh, is busy, both he and his wife are working a ton, they only have time to get together on the weekends, he's going to present the solution of a weekend plan. Makes sense, right? All right, that's step two. Step three is explain, right? So here you're just explaining why, right? So a simple... Uh, phrase like because or so that is a good uh, link to actually explaining why you're presenting the solution you're presenting. Um, so again, we'll just add to our solution statement here. Based on what you've told me, you and your wife are looking for a fun way to spend date night on the weekends. You should consider our weekend plan because this would give you access to all of our games on Fridays and Saturdays. Right? Again, pretty straightforward here, but you're providing a, a why, right? A, an explanation for why the weekend plan makes the most sense. All right, that's step three. 
And then our last uh, step of the SPET process is the trial close, okay? So this is essentially what it states in the name, right? So we're just looking to test the prospect in terms of their willingness or interest in the solution we presented, okay? So here you're just kind of gauging interest. So you could ask something like, what do you think? How does that sound? Will that work for you? Notice that this is a trial close because we're not actually asking for a credit card, right? We're just trying to gauge where the prospect is in terms of their interest in the solution we presented. So let's put it all together, okay? So for our prospect sample here, based on what you've told me, you and your wife are looking for a fun way to spend date night on the weekends. You should consider our weekend plan because this would give you access to all of our games on Fridays and Saturdays. How does that sound, right? Sounds kind of cheesy, <laughs> Liz. But no, it's important to include the trial close, right? Because otherwise, you're probably not going to get much of a response from the prospect, right? So this trial close, as cheesy it might, as it might sound, is an important um, step in this process, right? It gives us the ability to get an initial gauge on where the prospect is uh, in terms of interest and whether or not we should move forward with this uh, solution we presented or if we should move to an alternative solution if this is not a good fit. So that's the SPET phrasing process. Again, um, the idea behind the uh, SPET process is it just simplifies um, the concept of putting together a solution statement, right? It gives you a model and a guide for putting together that solution statement after you've gathered all the information you need in the needs analysis stage. Okay, so you're going to get a little bit more practice putting together a solution statement in one of your action items this week. So I've got a case study for you to look at. Uh, where you're going to get a, a bunch of information about a prospect. Uh, his name is Michael Scott, and he is the manager at Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. Um, you'll get a little bit of information about a needs analysis that was conducted with him, and then you'll be prompted to put together a solution statement based on that information. So you'll want to go back and utilize the SPET process to do so. Look forward to seeing what you come up with in those. Okay, so a couple of keys or tips here for offering effective solutions. Um, you know, the SPET process is important, but there's some other factors that we want to consider here um, in terms of nuance um, because it isn't necessarily a black and white process and there are some factors to consider. Um, first and foremost is don't rush the process, right? Remember, one of the biggest mistakes sales reps make in ticket sales is jumping the gun, right? Trying to sell before they have all the information that they need to make an appropriate recommendation, right? So you don't want to sell someone something that they don't need or want, right? And rushing the process um, can potentially do that. Um, you know, if you go back to, I think, one of our slides in last week's video lecture, we saw that the very few sales are actually closed in that first phone call or second phone call. Usually it takes something like five or six phone calls to get the sale. So don't rush the process. Uh, make sure that you've gathered all the information you need before moving on to um, the presenting solution stage. Um, next, explain the value proposition. Remember earlier in the semester we talked about this concept of value, uh, right? And the importance that uh, this idea around value, people are not going to buy unless they think the value is greater than the cost, right? So making sure you're able to explain that in the context of your solution is important, right? People are going to have to be able to see the value um, in order to uh, pull the trigger on that sale. Uh, and then finally, uh, avoid the upsell. Um, this one is really a two-parter, but um, this might seem like it's sort of antithetical to the concept of selling, right? You want to sell uh, as many tickets as possible and, and you want to sell the highest premium inventory possible because that means the most revenue for the organization and the highest commission. Um, but the truth is, if you upsell uh, a, a prospect, then they're less likely to come back the next year, right? Um, so if you sell someone a package that they're either not able to utilize, meaning that it's too many games and their schedule doesn't allow them to utilize all the games, um, or say uh, you sell someone a package that is priced outside of their budget and they're not able to make the payments, you know, these are examples of upselling. And uh, the idea that someone's going to come back after they realize, A, they can't go to all the games, or B, they can't afford the package, 
is probably unlikely, right? They're probably not coming back if they find out that the package isn't a good fit. Um, so don't be afraid to tell a customer no if they're looking at something that you don't think is a, a good fit for them. Um, because finding that right size package is uh, what is going to be the key to repeat business, right, to retention. Um, and we'll talk about retention later in the semester, but it really is an important concept uh, in the sales process. Uh, and I use this example here to showcase this. You know, what is better, a one-time purchase of a full season ticket package for 6000 or a five-year repeat purchase of a partial season ticket package? Well, I'm sure if you do a little math in your head, you can see that you know, the lower dollar amount package and the fewer game package is actually uh, the better revenue generator for the team, right? You're talking about 6,000 revenue versus 12,500 revenue over that five year period. Um, and it, you also have the potential to move that, um, you know, uh, partial game purchaser up that frequency escalator over time. Um, so avoiding the upsell is important again because what we're really looking for here is retention we want to bring customers back so we want to uh, create a product or package um, that fits their needs and not one that goes beyond them okay a couple of other tips here for offering effective solutions um, be confident in product knowledge um, I use that restaurant menu example uh, as a metaphor earlier in the semester, but it is so incredibly important um, as a sales rep to have all the information uh, available about the ticket packages that they're selling, right? Um, you want to make sure uh, that you have the information not just on hand to look up, but in your brain so that if questions come up during that presenting solutions phase, you can answer them quickly and efficiently. Um, and then educate the customer through edu selling. Um, you might have heard this term before as concept of edu selling is basically just providing knowledge about the product to the consumer so they know the product benefits and how they can use it. Um, you know, I think through reading uh, the book that we're reading this semester, you're probably um, starting to understand that the selling process uh, and the power dynamics of selling have changed dramatically in recent years. Uh, so this idea that the sales reps are going to have all this information that the uh, prospect doesn't have is just unrealistic. Um, and I think uh, the book um, Pink uses the example of car salesmen and how today really anyone has the information they might need um, to look up um, you know, information about a car they're going to buy. Um, and the same is really true for ticket products as well, right, in sport organization inventory. So why not use this concept of edge selling? Why not give the customer all the information um, available because they can probably find it anyway, right? And uh, by educating them on the products, it also empowers them to make a decision, right? That they feel better about, that they can talk to their family about or their business partners. All right. Um, I'm going to pause right here uh, and we're going to do a second half of the video lecture. We're going to talk about actually making the uh, recommendations in person, so making face-to-face -face presentations. Uh, we'll talk about some of the unique sales settings in sport and then also um, sales collateral. So we'll see you in the second video.